when you are safe and at peace, there is nothing that can ever happen to knock you off of that. I'm laughing because, you know, being in a, a flood where the waters were up to here and I can't swim, uh, watching the creek that was very shallow rage way above my head, <laughs> being in a, in a tornado, being in a, a storm uh, with a uh, anchor wrapped around the propeller so you couldn't move anywhere with bolts of lightning at least this big going down <laughs> around the boat and a wave where my husband's working on the propeller and he's going down and the wave is way above your head. And I think no fear whatsoever even occurred to me. Uh, being where somebody tried to kill me. And <laughs> when I think about that, I think about how God said that there is a rest that we need to enter into. And that rest is where you rest completely no matter what comes. And when they have all of the, where you're living, they have the whole target for the, for the tornadoes coming or the hurricane. And you are X marks the spot. You are the target. And you know it's going to go around you. <laughs> ah. You are not afraid. You don't watch out the window to see if it's coming. <laughs> Just like when they tell you that you're going to die, you don't look at the symptoms and watch them out because he says it might happen tomorrow and maybe next or maybe next week. <laughs> you don't look, oh, uh, you know, you don't look at the symptoms and for the symptoms. It never occurs to you that you are going to die because inside of you, he is sitting on the throne. And so none of it ever occurs to you because you know he has power over the winds, over the rain, over the lightning, over the, you know, when lightning bolts <laughs> right in front of me, I mean in front of me, as close as this, went right into the ground in front of me. There was still no fear, no terror, no anything. When you get bombarded with everything, including the kitchen sink, <laughs> body, mind, and spirit, and you go through that day in and day out and day in and day out, and you don't, it never occurs to you that you are going to be defeated. It never occurs to you. Oh, and I had my couple of times when I was very young, I had some problems. But that was when I was learning. But once you have Jesus Christ within you, it does not occur to you that anything but his will can happen to you. And when your life, when your body, your spirit literally slips out of your body. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And it literally is right there entering in to eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And God shows you it's not your time because he takes your body gently and puts it back. Just like he slipped away and just like he brings it back. How can you ever be afraid? How can you ever? That is why it is so important to die to self. Die to what you think. 
so many people think, well, I gave up this, I gave up that, I don't do this anymore, I don't do that anymore. And they have a whole plethora of things that they still do wrong. But yet they are able to compare themselves to you. <laughs> I'm not laughing at them. I'm laughing at the enemy. And I know that the scripture says that Michael the archangel durst not rail accusations at Satan. But he said, the Lord rebuke thee. Well, when the Lord is inside of you and the spirit of legion comes <laughs> and he just comes near you enough to try to touch your body and all you do is go, uh, and he's gone. He can't come near you. That's all you do. Because you see, that's Jesus in you. That's where God wants you to go. But you see, there's so much flesh inside of you that you refuse to give up. You see, you can take your life and you could put it parallel to mine. And you have a touch of this, a touch of that, a touch of this. But you didn't go through it over and over and over for 40 years. Day in and day out, the onslaught in every form it could take did not touch your body, your mind, your spirit, your relationships, your, your, where you lived, your child, your husband, every, just every day, day in and day out. And I'm laughing because I knew, I knew that I belonged to Jesus. And if I resisted him, the day would come where he couldn't touch me. And so you can say, well, God is a God of order. And I've heard many of you say it, that God had put a certain order of things. And, and I am telling you, a lot of those things, man put them in order and took the scriptures and manipulated them and taken them out of context to suit them on their own self. For my life is living proof that God can and will call a woman. My life says that, and it spits on Satan. Oh, I just love it. Oh, that feels so good, Lord, <laughs> to know that you're with me. When you're laying there and every muscle in your body is excruciatingly painful to move, because you're living off of the oxygenated blood. You're not getting enough oxygen to your blood. So your muscles, you can't move. The pain is agonizing. And yet, after almost 80 years of life that was hard, after almost, I would say, 50 years of life with Jesus, you could see him sitting on your bed, smiling at you. And you're laying there in agony. And you tell him, I'm not going to lay here and die. That's not what you taught me. I'm getting up out of this bed and for the sake of my husband's need for his lungs, I'm going to scrub this room. I said, so Jesus, you and I are going to spit in the devil's eye today. I mean, they said that my valve needed a clamp bigger than anyone they ever had. And that I would have to put an experimental clamp in there. And if I didn't get that done, I would have to go through open heart surgery again. And there I am with the blood just regurgitating out. There I am laying there looking at him, remembering 
all the times he would look at me and say, get up. I did not train you to die laying down. Get up and move. I didn't look at him in this excruciating pain and say, but I can't, Lord. I didn't do that. I looked at him and laughed with him. Him and I both laughed. And together we spit in the devil's eye. I got up and strength and power came to my body. And he sat right next to me and we're both laughing. Because you see, he's laughing at Satan. <laughs> and he looks at me and I look at him and we pull down by his strength the Venetian blinds, scrub the windows, scrub the woodwork, take the curtains, scrub the walls, scrub the ceiling. After I was told I was going to die, <laughs> I, God is laughing today because he's the only one that could say to the enemy and laugh at him. And he's in here. He's in here. He comes out here. And he's in here. No matter what you think, he's in these eyes. For I see with the eyes of God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So we're over there like this, scrubbing everything, scrubbing the ceiling, scrubbing everything. <laughs> and I go to the doctor who was supposed to approve my needing that clamp. And he takes an EKG and he says, Wow, why, your EKG is perfect. It's unusual. <laughs> they had read all of the other miracles of my heart. But he had never seen it, see. So <laughs> he looks at me, very nice young man. He had a special job, and that was to get me to sign papers to have that clamp done. <laughs> and he's, he says to me, and I looked at him, and I says, you know, that is really strange that you could say that to me, because you know what I just did? And I told him about scrubbing the nation blinds, the windows, the walls, the ceilings. He says, when did you do this? And I, I let him know, I think it was like a day and a half ago. You should have seen his face. I, I wished you'd have been there. And he looked at me real serious. And he says, lady, you don't need this procedure. You know why? God proved to him by that EKG that my heart was healed. That's not the first time I can laugh. I can't count to you how many times my heart rate was 225. And my husband says, Marion, do you want to go to the emergency room? And I laughed. I said, no. I had a Benadryl and during those years, it, it would put me to sleep. <laughs> and I picked up one of them and I said, you see this little pill? I says, it's going to put me to sleep. When I wake up tomorrow morning, my heart rate will be perfect. Because if that devil thinks I'm going to be up all night concerned about my heart, he's got another thing coming. He's crazy. And I laughed. You can imagine my husband. He's been through this oh, time and time and time again. And my head down, boom, I wake up, my heart's right in sinus rhythm. Some of my prayers are prophecies. Some of the things I say come straight out as a prophecy, a fulfillment of a prophecy. Most of my life is that way. Many of it are miracles. 
It's not a matter of you calling me on the phone to get a miracle. No, dear. It's not a matter of that contact that we have for you to get the same miracles. It's a matter of you allowing God with the truth in me coming right out to you and you accept it the way he gives it. Not the way you say it is. Not the way you think it is. You know, I think one of the worst places a person could be is, oh, I just know everything. I know, I know, I know. Let me share this with you. If you knew what you claim to know, you would not be playing with God. Because while you are playing pat cake, where you know you won't listen, where you know that you are not doing his will, and you know he's been after you for a long time to behave yourself, this is not the hour to claim that you know. It would be better for you, <laughs> like I've had to, crawl. I crawled to get up because I told God I would rather die than give Satan a glory over my body. So when the having a heart attack before I knew what it feels like. And so when the worst a heart attack that has ever been on my body came upon my body like he did with death, saying, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I laid there and I looked up at God and I said these words. If I die, I die. But I Devil's not going to get the glory over my body. Because <laughs> I'm getting up. No matter what the doctor said. Because he said, don't move. And as soon as I went like this and jumped up, I was completely healed. Not everybody can do that. You're not called to it. I was called to it so I can teach you. But if you become unteachable, where you're positive, you know everything, and you have only gone through a touch of this, a touch of that, a taste of this, and a taste of that, and you've got yourself that you are the greatest. Because this is one of the worst things that can happen to you. And I've seen it happen to what I thought was a great woman of God. She had a tremendous power of healing. And she had everybody go to her and sit next to her. No one is as beautiful as you are. Lie number one. A lot of women, far prettier and beautiful. No one sings as well as you do. Lie number two, she couldn't sing. <laughs> she couldn't sing at all. It was horrible when she sang. And she believed everything other people told her about herself. She believed her own PR. So when they said, there's no one in the world like you, they said, hey, you know what? I believe that because I know God's talked to me here. I know God's talked to me there. Well, I didn't accept that when I still had problems with, with the flesh. You see, when you accept it and you have problems with the flesh, you're in trouble and you have no idea. Because you are accepting what this said about you, what that one said about you, what you think you heard, what you, and you still have all of this problem with the flesh. Because whatever God is telling you is filtered through that flesh, and you haven't let go of it. And I don't know if you ever will, but I will know one thing. I didn't accept nothing until I knew I was dead. When people can really, really hurt you to your face over and over and over, 
year after year, day after day, hour after hour, year after year. And in your heart, there's not one thought against them, not one thought of anger. No, that is when you are dead. It never occurs to you. Like it never occurs to you that you're going to die. It never occurs to you to think anybody is going to pay. If God come and took them, that was between them and God and nothing to do with me. I mean, I beg God, the, the most terrifying person to themselves, the most deceived person is the one that still has flesh problems and they believe other people are going to go down for touching them. Oh, I wouldn't be in their shoes for all the money in the world. I had people like that in my life that died terrible deaths because they believed well, that one dared to touch me. They're going to pay. And when she heard that they had a problem, oh, you would see her walk away like this, smiling. God's with me. One of the worst things you could really believe is God is with you in these things that pertain to the flesh. You see, she refused to die. That was her problem. If she wouldn't have refused to die, she wouldn't have had any problem. When she did, was finally dying, she began to vomit. When she vomited, she vomited bucket after bucket after bucket of green stuff. I wasn't there. I didn't have to see it. Thank God. And, and she'd just tell me, I don't understand. I keep pouring it out into the commode, and I get another bucket, and Mary, and it's all this green stuff. She was being delivered of many, many years of demons. All I had to do was talk to her. Didn't call him out, didn't bind her, didn't rebuke her, didn't anything. I spoke the truth. Now, if I speak the truth to someone and I'm not dead, that truth is going to come back on me and clasp, clasp, clasp a hold of me and hurt me bad. Because I had the gall to believe that I was something I was not. If I dared to think that I was a prophet in 40 years, never would I dare to think I was a prophet, even though I knew much better than anybody I'd ever know. I dared not. Until he came in all his glory. And when he comes in all his glory, there's no mistake. The terror on your body cannot bear it. We are only alive because he kept you alive. And if it doesn't come like that, you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're at, and you don't know where you're going. Many of you are self-called. Many of you pick up that Bible the way you've been taught, that everybody can do this and everybody can do that. And it's not true. Is God with you? Of course he is. You couldn't do one thing without God. You couldn't breathe without God. Did God help you? Did God give you that gift to lay hands on somebody to pray? Of course he did. But he didn't give it to you for you. For, for you to become rich and rob the poor. For every one of those people that gave up and gave up and gave up and gave up so they could pay for you to read a scripture over them and think it came true. Every one of them that dug deep, dig deep, and give the give the uh, the best you can give, give the first fruits. Forget 
The rent has to be paid to house your child. Forget that the water bill has to be paid so you could drink. Forget the electricity has to be on or the, the heater has to be on. Forget it. Give it to God. He'll give it back to you. He said, oh, no man anything. But you say different. You say that if you give me a thousand dollars, God's going to take this scripture and give it. Oh, my. Oh, my. That scripture belongs to the one who obeys God by dying to self. That promise comes true between them and God. And you covet their money. You tell them what to do with it. That would be like me sitting here and saying, God, you know, that person, they have a lot of money. I know they do. You know, hey, make them give me some money. I need it. Whew. When the wrath of God falls, <laughs> you're going to be there. I'm over here, Lord. I can't touch that, Lord. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, lay it on their heart. They've got so much money. Make them give it to me. <laughs> Everybody forgets Ananias and Sapphira. Everybody forgets that. That's why I tell you, I don't want your money. Especially if you have children. Even if they're adult children. Even if they went astray. Even if you know they're out there and they're astray. And they have barely nothing. But you're sitting there rich. You have a lot of money. You won't help them. Well, I might condone their sin. Well, what if they're hungry? What if they need a decent place to live? Oh, you quit being a mother. You quit being a father. You kick them out. That is a blot on your garment. Because God never taught that. God taught to take care of your own household first. He didn't say, just like you. He didn't tell the children, honor thy father and mother only when you're right. He's not telling you to take care of them and feed them if they need it when they're right. Well, some of them went on drug. Well, of course they did. You kicked them out. Well, of course they did. You delivered them up to Satan. Like the little 16-year-old girl that called me and said, I'm so tired of fighting these demons. I mean, this is a precious little girl. I'm not imitating her and laughing at her. I'm just telling you what's happened. My mother and dad thought I was too much of a handful, and they went to the pastor, and he said, deliver her up to Satan. And I said, honey, you didn't need anybody to deliver you up to Satan. You did that all by yourself. The moment you decided that you knew better than your parents and you decided to dishonor them, you gave your life to Satan. It's scriptural. Honor thy father and thy mother. Disobedience to parents. I told her, go look in Romans chapter 1. Disobedience to parents is written in the same sentence as murder with a comma in between. It's a sin that is given up, that God says, give it. Oh, they only recognize two men with men and women with men, but they don't rec recognize these others. Some of you that have gone on and deserted your parents, well, I can't afford to take care of them. I can't afford to even go see them. I'm busy. I don't, well, they're old. It's their time's coming. They're going to die. What good am I to them? I don't, I can't go. Well, I just don't have the gas money, but I gave every penny. 
to that preacher and that woman preacher and that man. I gave every penny I could get. So God's going to give me back. But hey, my mother and dad, they're going to go. I don't have to go there. Well, I, you know, I gave the money for gas away. I gave the money to let them know I love them away. As I was taught and told, you got to give to get. So I could desert my mother and dad. Who cares? Who cares that they sacrificed their whole life for me? Who cares all the years of growing up and the sacrifices they made for me? God's not looking at that. He knows I'm young. Oh, my goodness. If you ever want to hear anything viler than that, just think of the little girl that used to prance around wanting to sleep in bed with an 80-some-year-old man, wanted him as her sugar daddy. So she walked around and said, I'm young. So for, so she would just, I'm young. I could have anybody I want. Well, she lost. She couldn't have anybody that was godly. She had to learn the hard way. When you target to get, when you target and you're in church to get, when you target, when you sit down and you pick out of this message what's going to make you better and greater. Miss this message what's going to make you better and greater. When you gather to yourself people who want to destroy, who follow you, and I'm, I'm telling you because you destroy the person that really has the gospel with your mouth. And you have the goal, you get thousands of followers. You get thousands of followers that lie to you. Oh, wow. Common sense went, oh, that'll never happen to me because I belong to Jesus. And he knows they're no good. He knows they had no business saying this. And I'm the one to tell them. They had no business saying that. Why, they got it wrong. They should have said this. They, Oh, you're, you are the corrector of the world. You have the power ordained from heaven to correct people when you've never lifted. With this little finger, you never lifted any burden. You never went through anything. Oh, oh yeah, oh, I know, I know. I went through this. I went through that. I went through this. I went through that. And you think you're going to stand before God and say, well, I have just what she has. I made it. Well, go. Because when you go and you think that you're just like me, you're going to go through what I went through. And you may not make it. You're going to go on a path that's day in and day out. Pressure and oppression from mind, body, spirit, everything. To try to abstain something you're not called to. I'm talking about the ones that they look, take one look at me and they run. They grab it and they run. Well, I learned this from her. And so God's going to work it out and give it to me. This is, this is what the church itself had taught them. This is what the church said. Plagiarize. Grab a hold of what they teach and go and use it. Hey, I got it all. Look, I'm sitting in church and they think I'm somebody special. What good is that to God? When a hard case comes up, oh, I don't have time for that. I, I, I can't take care of that. I don't know how. Then why did you claim you had a call? Well, you know, God, you know I can't 
I can't do that. You know that, that, that I would be working night and day and, and, uh, and I would be striving to help those people. And, and chances are, I don't know enough. I, I really don't. I, I'd have to go back and consult her because I, I don't know enough. So you give Satan access to you. You give him the power to have access to you. And all the while, oh, no, but I tell them I'm not a prophet. No, 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 no. I won't prophesy over you. But I'll let you tell me how wonderful I am, how different I am. You're like the woman that says, I just don't know why married men chase after me. Everywhere I turn, this handsome married married man starts chasing after me. Oh, I rebuke him? Oh, yes. I mean, I rebuke them. I said, yeah, right. After you enjoy and you say to yourself, I still got it. Just like that lying prophet says, well, I am a prophet. That's why they like me, because I know, because you have a certain amount, and because you have a certain amount, you play with it, and you keep playing with it, and you play with it to the degree that then you become a stench in God's nostrils, because he gets tired of it. He's been trying to lead you for a long time into all truth, and you just won't go. You just won't go. It's too hard. I've been through so much, but you don't understand. And everywhere that every person has ever had the gall to tell me that I don't understand, they have a place to face that I went through that proves I do understand. I'm going to stand there in heaven, and everybody that tells all these lies, they're going to have me right there with Jesus that I overcame it all in him that he did it for me because I died to self oh you can think what you want you could look at me and say well look at what she's doing look at what she's saying <laughs> have at it because if he gave me the message you got a problem not me it's like I've told others at times, one of us is going down and it just is not going to be me. I've lived too long. I've been through too much with Jesus Christ for me to ever believe that he would give me up to you. Because you see, when you put yourself in my way, God has a path for me and you become a stumbling block and you block me. Because you think that's what God wants. When you put yourself in a direct path of what, what God wants for my life, and you think God called you to do it, I'm not the one that's going to move. I don't have to. I'm not the one that's going to pray. I don't have to. I'm not the one that's going to have to. Oh, God, please. I'm not the one that's going to do that. You are. Because I've been there, and I did that something like 40 years ago. I used to be just like that. That's how I know where you're at. Because I used to think just like that. And if you don't think that I didn't get to a place where I almost made it, and then God just took everything off me. And it was like, okay, Marion, you think you're so smart? You think you know it all? <laughs> You think he didn't laugh at me? You think he didn't show me and put me in my place? You think he didn't do that over and over with me for me to get to a place of understanding? You think that that never happened to me? Forty years ago it did. I've been living at peace with God completely, completely dead to the flesh for a lot of years. And then you say, but we only have your say-so on that. Sure you do. And if you want to believe it, you could die to self too. You could pick up your cross and follow him. 
Or you can say, well, I'm not listening to that. That's too hard. That's, that's just something. Have at it. You're going to go around that mountain and around that mountain and around that mountain. Or you're going to hit your head up against that brick wall called Jesus Christ and hit it again and hit it again until it occurs to you to look up. Is it me, O oh God, standing in the need of prayer? What have I done? Where haven't I died so that you might live within me? Because I promise you that when you hit that place, there is no trying the spirits. There is no any. You know this is God. There's no I think or I should or I may be. There's none of that. None of that whatsoever. And if you come to me, I'll tell you the truth. In the hopes with all my heart that you'll hear his voice. Because I have nothing against anybody. My desire is for all of you. If every one of you, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, that he is reaching out his arms to, to gather. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I want you to do it just the way he does. His way, not my way. His way. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to make it, those of you that are sincere with God, those of you that really want him and won't play. But some of you have such a deep deception, a strong delusion, because some of you think just because he called you that makes you invincible, that makes you where you're not vulnerable, to ever be taken. You have to get past that. I got past that 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. 40 years ago. I overcame that 40 years ago. Where the lies could not come. So you can take the scriptures. And every one of you do it. And say well the scripture says this about. This and this says. But don't stick your nose up in the air. <laughs> Think you got something. Because I'm telling you, in my first book, I think it's towards the end of the book. Here's what the Lord said about that. He said, when you think that you have something that's going to prove she's not who she says she is, and you think you've got that tightly gripped in your hand, and you are going to expose her to not be of God. He says, here's what's going to happen. He says, I, God the Father, I am the great I am, is going to have you open that hand up, and you're going to see nothing there. For I will not deliver her into your hands, ever. <laughs> so pray by the millions, he says in that book. Pray by the millions and see where it gets you. Gather by the millions because in your head, it's numbers. Oh. That is why he said to me, I want your first message to be to those, and say it clearly, those that call themselves my prophets. Oh, but he didn't say that they had to be a man and not a woman. He didn't say that they had to be a woman and not a man. He put them all together because he is not looking at gender. Only man looks at gender. God is not looking at your gender. 
and you can say God put it in order that man was this high? When, when Christ said, watch over as head, that was a protector. That was not a deceiver. That was not by force. That was not to deceive and to hurt and keep the woman down. That is not what God was talking about. A dictator, a tyrant, a liar, the devil will take those women by force and grab a hold of them and say, you must believe this in the scriptures. You see, prayer, abracadabra, manipulation, control. You're going to do it man's way. You're going to be what I say. Have at it. <laughs> Have at it. Can't deliver. God up to Satan. He'll never go. Can't ask for the death of the flesh. You can stick all kinds of voodoo sticks in me and anything that you want, but they don't touch me. Have at it. Manipulate the word and get it out there. Make sure you nail her. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let's pray. Let's pray her down. Make sure she never gets up. Make sure nobody listens to her. Okay. Whatever. Because you see, my life, my calling, has never been in your hands and never will be. I'm going to do what God wants me to do, what God called me to do, what he gave me the power to do. I am going to go where God wants me to go. I'm going to be what God wants me to be. I'm going to say what God wants me to say. I'm going to have what God wants me to have. And I don't need your money to do it. I don't need your support to do it. I have him. I don't need your affirmation. I don't need you to, oh, well, we're going to honor her today. Well, go honor yourselves because I don't need it. Now, if you want to come and learn, you would be surprised that when people submit themselves to the truth, God will never be cruel to you. He would never talk harshly to you. He only talks harshly to the hypocrite. He will never call you out for shame. He would do nothing. Like I told you, the guy that had the spirit of legion, when he came to kill me, I didn't say a word. He fell to his knees in the presence of the power of God and got saved. It had nothing to do with me. It had to do with what's inside of me. When the woman had, who needed the deliverance came into my presence, and I felt it, and when that came into my presence, immediately I went, like I was going to wretch the worst wretch I ever did, and it come out, <laughs> spittle. And she went, ah, I've been delivered. I've been I can't believe I've been delivered because that demon could not come in my presence. So gather up together and do your dirtiest work. See where it gets you. Because remember, I taught that when you do this with these manipulating fingers, and you think you're going to do this, remember, you're doing this to yourself. I don't even have to pray. Like that one young lady that she felt a war. When she got on the phone with me, she felt a war. And it was her warring against herself. She literally warred and warred and warred and said, I'm so tired of warring. She kept on attributing it to me. <laughs> Okay, lady, do whatever. 
all of her manipulated lives, all of the things that she did where she sat there in, in prayer meetings and lied on me and did it. And then when she warred according to what she said, to what she thought, it just kept coming like this. And she just warred and warred and warred until she couldn't war anymore. I'm so tired of it. Well, don't do it. <laughs> Simple as that. Don't do it. I don't know who needs this message. I really don't. Because I target nobody. I don't have any idea who needs this. I'm only saying what God gave me. You have homework to do. If the shoe fits, apply it, wear it enough to get rid of it. That's all he wants. He doesn't, <laughs> you don't even have to contact me. You don't have to have nothing to do with me. He wants you. He wants all of your heart. He's already got all of mine. turning out to be a nicer day than it looked like. It's been darker. When you see the room around me darker, it's because the sun isn't shining. And I could put on lights. What do I need for? I got enough light here. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And I can remember dancing in church, laughing. And I stopped and I said, God, why am I laughing? And God said, it's me laughing. He says, because you should be dead and here you are dancing. I said, oh, really? I had no idea how sick I was. Really, Lord? And God smiled and just said, go ahead. Keep on dancing. And, oh, man, I was having a good time with God. I wasn't dancing to be seen. I was dancing before the Lord like I always did because everything that I did had meant something between him and I, not between me and your dance teams, not between you and whatever, however you worked them out. But I remember that. And he, he, he let me know what it was and why I was in that condition. And I'm telling you, never did it occur to me I was going to die. And they were always, the hole in my belly was this big. This big. Probably about that deep. And they marveled when they looked at it. Oh, look at that. It was wide open. Absolutely wide open. If anybody should have died, it should have been me. The heart doctor said, lady, it's the size of a gunshot wound to the belly. Oh, I was weak. Oh, I had a hard time. But oh, did I have Jesus. <laughs> when I saw a hundred and some year old woman go in, in a wheelchair and pull up to the window for her appointment, and I'm laying there on a gurney, unable to move, I couldn't even function even a little. <laughs> and I looked at that 102-year-old woman, and I thought, wow. <laughs> Didn't occur to me I was going to die. I just looked at her and thought, wow, she can do that. <laughs> oh, how God must have laughed. Because if he laughed while I'm dancing, I'm sure he was laughing when I was doing that. And when they're looking at that wound in that belly, and the, and those people were looking at it, there's three or four of them. 
Look at it. It's so infected. It's swirling in there. <laughs> the weakness was so devastating that they didn't figure I was going to live at all. <laughs> oh, how God had a good time. Thank God. Praise it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. He got all the glory. Everyone, everyone that came near me felt the presence of God and knew it was God. Just like those that I had was at their deathbed. The doctors couldn't even look at me, put their heads down and said, no one has to tell us you have God. Just like those five doctors that were examining a brand new heart. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll probably put all this in a book. I could probably put, if you could understand the thoughts and feelings of someone who goes through these things, then they can help you go through them and perhaps even worse. It could help you realize how real he is. That as bad as you think you have it. I went through my first seizure and it made, gave me a compassion for those that have seizures. I'm telling you, you talk about, I can't even describe how terrible it is to go through a seizure. And I had a severe one. And strokes. You talk about it. Look what he did. <laughs> Look what he did. I'm 81 years old. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to go. I, what I'm doing is in just enjoying God. I'm just enjoying the memory of all the things that he done. And I, I could be here for months letting you know. And 24-7 talking about it and still not say enough. I think he wants you to know who is praying for you. He wants you to know that he's there for you. That he is not going to give you up. That he is not going to let you go. No matter how bad it looks, rejoice. For your redemption draweth nigh. It seemed like at the time, if I would have thought about it, I could have looked at it this way. Oh, when is this going to end? I didn't. I never took it more than one day at a time. Every time I woke up, it was a whole new day for me to get victory. There was no such thing as me going, oh, I don't know if I can endure this. Oh, it never occurred to me. Never occurred to me. For Jesus was that powerful inside of me. I knew he was there. I knew I could overcome it. I knew. Get close to him. So you could know also. Get near him. Die to yourself. And I was trying to tell some of you that think you have a lot, oh, you need a double dip. Because the closer you think you are, that's how much farther away you are. I'm telling you, I'm warning you. You're so sure because he's talked to you this way. He's worked this out this way. He's doing this this way. He's doing it for a reason. He wants you to die. He wants you to know it's not because you're so special. It's not because you call him father. It's not because you're so sweet and you're so great that he loves you. That's not why he did it for me. All the things I tell you about, he did those things for you so I could come here and share them. That's what he did them for. That's where he said, You've got to be, I've got to be your minister 
That's what I am. I minister to you constantly. Constantly. If it's not believing him in prayer, then it is in other ways. And all the ones that talk to me, I'm there ministering, asking for nothing, believing I'm nothing. It's him. I don't have nothing to do with it. And if you don't, you're not doing that and you're thinking about, oh, you've got this wonderful walk with him. You've got this wonderful talk with him. And he revealed, oh, I would be scared to remember all the things that he did for me. And I didn't give nothing back. Ooh. Because I didn't allow myself to be in a place where I could give back. I wasted a lot of time playing. That is a scary thing. I didn't do that. But I could have. That is a scary place to be.